Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerem Adrian, welcome back to the channel. First things first, happy 10th birthday Lotro. The game has reached its 10th uh, year milestone, the anniversary festivals and celebrations has just gone live on Lord of the Rings Online. And it is incredible to think that Lotro is 10 years old, there's been so much that us players have gone through in the last 10 years. So in the next few days, in the next week or a couple of weeks, you, you're going to be seeing a lot more exclusive Lotro content uh, on my end. Stuff like, you know, 10 of my favorite regions in Lotro and stuff like that. And I have praised this game in the past for what it does right. I have critiqued it for what it doesn't. But, you know, just for the month of April, we're going to be just celebrating the game. Celebrating um, this wonderful avenue that we have to explore Tolkien's Middle-earth uh, online in the Lord of the Rings online. So to kick things off, this video is about sharing with you guys, fellow Lotro players, uh, our 10 favorite or greatest or most memorable moments in Lotro over the last 10 years. And notice I say uh, ours because I do have a special guest with me. Um, she's one of my closest Lotro friends. She's Wiga. She's on Discord with me right now. And together we're going to trade moments. We're going to go down that list and tell you guys, you know, 10 of the best moments we've had here on Lotro. So with that said, I'm going to bring in Wiga right now. Hello, Wiga. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? You're probably already playing the festival stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I uh, used up all my tokens for last year, so I'm trying to get them for the new horse. Oh, that's clever. So Wiga's been telling me the new horse is absolutely awesome, and the fact that I'm here recording this right now means I can't be in game to check out the new stuff, which is unfortunate, but we'll get there. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to be uh, sharing our 10 favorite uh, or greatest moments here in Lotro. So I suppose, Wiga, you've already got your 10 listed out. <laughs> and I, I told her uh, in the in the leading up to this uh, video that you know you can be as cheesy as you want, or you know it could be just something totally random, anything that you know we've experienced in game or things that happened or you know stuff like that. So I guess I'll kick things off with my number ten, and I did mention cheesy, so this one's gonna be <laughs> extremely cheesy. So my number ten is actually um, joining the Lotro Endgame or entering an alliance and I'll give you some context to this prior to joining you know this raid alliance that I'm gonna be speaking about I was primarily a solo type player uh, because I am a gaming introvert so I don't really you know reach out and join communities or stuff like that so I primarily played on my own I had a guild a small guild with friends and you know we just did things within our close uh, circuit of people that we knew so one day, you know, there was this raid pod going on and I was like, yeah, why not? I'll just put my axe in uh, chat and that's how you get picked up for raids. And I was brought into this, this uh, Saruman raid, this two raid, Tower of Orthanc. And after that raid, this alliance, an alliance basically is, you know, several different kinships coming together to form this alliance, raiding alliance, so that, you know, there's more, there's a bigger pool of players to pull from. And I joined that alliance and it's called R-A-M-M -M, and that's like awesome for me because I got to meet so many wonderful people uh, through this alliance and a lot of them have become you know friends not only in Lotro but outside of Lotro and one of them is on discord right now and her name's Wiga so yeah I'm really <laughs> <laughs> appreciative of that alliance and while a lot of them I would say 90% of them are no longer playing Lotro. It is a great throwback to you know those days, and I do miss you know running raids with that group of people. So yeah, that's probably one of that's my number 10 favorite moment, joining that alliance and and being um, you know shown what the raiding scene looks like back in the day, and how to you know learn to work with each other, and you know build friendships over time. So yeah, super appreciative of that. So that's my number 10. <laughs> Cheesy as heck. What a way to start. <laughs> what a way to start uh, the video. Let's go over to Wiga. What's your number 10, Wiga? Uh, getting to Moria for the first time. It was a huge deal because, like, all the cool kids are, like, hanging out in 21st Hall. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, so as soon as I got past the intro, I did the intro with a, a kinmate of mine. So as soon as we got past the intro, I was really excited to just start questing in Moria. 
And even though, like, I promptly got lost and fell off, like, 50 cliffs, it was still <laughs> fun getting there. Nice. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> um, we're probably going to have some similarities in our list <laughs> moving down, but that's a great number 10. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love Moria, too. Okay, moving down to number 9 now. My number 9 is rolling and playing a captain um, as my second main class and the context of this was when I first started playing Lotro I picked a champion because it sounded like you know something uh, a class archetype that I would like basically a melee fighter lots of you know melee damage and skills the ability to use you know, great sword dual wheel it just kind of looked cool to me and I played that from like end of 2010 all the way up to mid 2011 and I thought you know this whole DPS thing there were so many other champions um, and at that time the current endgame was like doing all the Moria stuff uh, you know the turtle raids what was it grand stairs stuff like that so champions were there's just too many of them and for me to get into one of those pugs it's like I, I'm not bringing anything different <laughs> to the table other than just smacking people with clobber and you know stuff like that so I decided okay I'm just gonna re-roll uh, a new tune I'm just gonna make a captain because the captain sounds like a decent you know handyman jack of all trades class and maybe at endgame I could be more used to pug groups <laughs> so yeah I rolled a captain and I have not looked back since that class means so much to me now looking back because of you know things I was able to, to do with the captain it just opened up my eyes to endgame in a new way that I don't think it would have if I'd stuck with my champion which is primarily a DPS class but as a captain you know I, I you know you could heal you could you know, buff players I mean this was before the class trait trees came out which that's when I fell in love with the captain class because prior to trait trees there were so many things you could do in terms of making a hybrid build and just buffing people. It was a very uh, proactive class. These days, captains are very much a bit of proactive and reactive because a lot of your skills depends on procs. But yeah, I mean, I absolutely in love with this captain class, and because of it, because of Lotro and the captain class, every other MMO I play now, I have to pick a class that somewhat resembles the Lotro captain. Um, I know WoW's got the Paladin and you know stuff like that, but. Yeah, it's it's all down to Lotro and the Captain class, so that's my number nine. What is your number nine, Wigan? My first like expansion, Rise of Isengard. So um, as soon as I got the download finished, I jumped in game and started uh, questing, and it was kind of like the first time I did like actual landscape quest, all of them with, like with a friend. Before that, it, I was just like solo or with you know. Uh, random kidneys for like random quest, but I did the whole thing with a friend, and that was a great experience. Man, Rise of Isengard, that was a great expansion, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and those, still my favorite. Now that you mentioned it, like Dunland, the one thing that sticks in my mind in Dunland is, uh, damn it, what's that? Uh, um, Ugwiroth requires us to welcome Devodia, <laughs> and anything with the word Devodia, it's, it's just stuck in my mind. <laughs> I mean, 90% of the NPCs just say that in Dunland. It's like, Devodiad. <laughs> which is kind of cool. Alrighty, that's cool. Um, Alright, let's go to number 8 now. And my number 8 is uh, attending my first Lotro Weatherstock. And for you know, if all of you watching don't know what a Weatherstock is, it's actually uh, a Lotro concert that takes place on the Landreville server every year in the summer months, uh, June or July, I, I forget. But, you know, everybody congregates on Amun Sol, which is weather top. And, you know, there's a battle of the band competition because Lotro has this in-game music system using all the ABC files and whatnot. So there's a whole bunch of rock stars in this game that, you know, from the outside looking in, you wouldn't know that they even exist, but they are out there. And you'll see them playing music in Bree, you'll see them playing music all over the place, especially on Landreville server, as I said, but the EU servers, they do have a lot of bands as well. Some of the notable ones are um, the Lonely Mountain Band, for example, and there's a couple more, the names are just not coming to me. But yeah, in 2012, I made a little alt uh, on the Landreville server just to check it out. And, you know, there was like so many players. And back then, you, you have to understand the lag in, I mean, the internet speeds in Malaysia are a POS. It's just a piece of shit. And the lag was so intense that you couldn't move. 
because there's just so many players walking from Bree. That was a that was a walk, right? So if there's like tunes that are below level ten or whatever, then there's gonna be like escort guards. And there's this one kin called the Sons of Numnor who did this. They would escort people from Bree all the way to Weathertop just to catch the um, the concert. And that was a fantastic experience for me because I've never seen so many Lotro players congregate in one area, you know, for something that doesn't even involve questing or raids. You know, it's not a world event, it's not a landscape boss, it's just an in-game player event. And it's a testament to Lotro. I mean, 10 years later, this year we should get another Weatherstock. And it's been going on for so long. So yeah, that's a testament to the Lotro community and the RP and the music community as well. Uh, to keep that alive. That's a fantastic experience for me. And yeah, looking forward to this year's Weatherstock. Alright, Vega, what's your number 8? My first, first age drop. Like, not the one you get from Warrior with you barter, but like the one that actually had to drop from a T2 boss. It was T2, I think it was Lightning. And I was so excited. And everyone was so excited for me because I was, I'd been a tank for that particular group for, for like most of the expansion and I had finally got one. Nice. You know, I've still never gotten anything good out of a two drop never the one the one time i saw a scale uh <laughs> that scale the dragox scale I, shag was like let me have it and i'm like sure i'll pass <laughs> and i never got anything good out of two but yeah i imagine that would have been awesome yeah that's not on my list though first eight what first eight drop it's, it's not unfortunately i should have put that in okay all right, now we go to number seven, and my number seven is uh, my first Drygok run, and Drygok as an instance is oh my goodness! I'm sure we could you know could jump in and tell you all about it too. I mean, it was I mean we've already seen you know raid bosses that were cool in terms of mechanics and and you know stuff like that, but with the Drygok instance, the Drygok raid specifically, I mean at the time you have to understand we've already seen. Uh, instances with lots of trash mobs and you know um, it had a very specific start middle and end in terms of getting to that end boss but Drygok itself you just entered his lair and you made your way down to face him and when he appears for the first time even the voice when you hear Drygok for the first time you're like oh my god she's getting real you know it was the closest thing we had to like a smog boss and oh, man I, I cannot it's hard to put into words what the, that first experience was like. Do you remember your first Drygok run, Vega? <laughs> I was so nervous because I was tanking it, and then you had to know the cues because yeah. like, the DPS wasn't as fast as it is today. <laughs> I was so scared, and I wiped the raid in the face <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean back then I I haven't I wasn't in RAM yet, so you, you could imagine my first Drygok runs were all in pugs. And the problem was everybody was just there to see Drygog. They weren't there to complete the raid. I mean, we were we, we were wiping nonstop because you know it was a challenge to get down to him the first time because you know he pops his oh, eyes yeah. in and he kills players who get caught in his eye beam. Um, and then if you didn't have a burg, if you didn't have a burglar in your raid at the time, you were pretty much screwed because it's like a DPS race and you just could not kill him. So yeah, I love Drygog. I mean, if there was a chance to play it today, I would jump in. And at the time, you know, it was a great uh, nod to burglars because I feel even right now they're such an underappreciated class. So Drygogs, uh, the Drygog raid to everyone who had a burglar, you must have felt pretty super important <laughs> back when that raid yeah, came out. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people rolled burglars just for that raid. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Love Drygog. What's your number seven, Wigan? Um, this was a move by Turbine that I really liked in U13. They made a um, auto fellowship option, and so me and my friend, whenever before this, whenever one of us would log in, we would always group together. We would always end up questing together, or we would just end up playing like somewhere in Bree, just playing music or whatever. And so when they added the auto fellowship option, it was so great. It was amazing. I really loved it. So, like every time, like if you're on and if your your friend logs on, it automatically puts you in a fellowship with them, right? Yep. Like it was a great move by Turbine. I don't know why. Like a lot of people don't use it. Yeah, I I don't use it for <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> these days, it, I'm sure you notice I'm and on all the time because there's so yeah. many ninja invites and stuff. Like sometimes when it because. 
because of unfortunately because of what I do now, it's just so hard to find time to play. Like you know, just play Lotro, just get in there, experience the story, do whatever, and just you know, head on out. And I'm unfortunately I'm not that much of a social butterfly that you know I just want to be in groups all the time. Sometimes I just want my own time and my own space. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm. I'm well, that, that's like, a great that's feature. Because like, as a guard at the time, at the time I was getting a lot of ninja invites. Right. And so whenever I logged in, if my friend was on before me, and I would be automatically added to his group, then. It stopped all those ninja invites. I think a lot. I mean, Lotro. There's a lot of couples that play Lotro. There's a lot of family members and you know, small groups of friends that play Lotro. That's a great feature that I think everybody would enjoy. So if you did not know that feature exists, you do now. So <laughs> make use of it. Okay, we are moving down to number six, and my number six is very PvP centric, uh, and one of my proudest moments too. This is uh, number six is leading my first Moors raid. And I cannot tell you how, when I look back at this now, if you told me in 2011 that, uh, Havel, one day you'll be leading a Morse raid, I'll, I'll just <laughs> laugh at you. I'll just laugh and I would like to say, no chance. Absolute no chance. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it happened. And the thing about Morse is, when I started going out there, it was really a solo type experience. Me and maybe a couple friends uh, from my kin just going out there, just seeing what the small group fights were like. And then when I joined the uh, raid alliance I was talking about, my number 10, um, a whole bunch of us started going out. Uh, we concluded both of us have been in some epic Morse raids together for years. Um, you know, and, and that really started my um, love or addiction to Morris and PvP that I can't explain today. And it was during those periods when I was so engrossed in the Morris, there was like a period of like two months where I just did nothing but log in in the Morris, I log out in the Morris. And the time in between is just doing dailies and, and hunting creeps and not giving a crap about instances or marks or medallions or whatever, you know, the PvP players were chasing. And, you know, it came down to a point where I was familiar with a lot of the people that logged into the Moors and you know we don't know each other in terms of you know I don't know you outside of the Moors in terms of PvE I don't know your kid I don't know you know what your playstyle in PvE is like but in the Moors I, I kind of know who you are I know the randoms running around uh, the freeps especially I gotta say this is freep side so there's just one day where you know we were all ungrouped and there was a huge creep raid out and it just happened. I just grabbed everybody, made a raid, and we went on and did that for like four hours. We were trading keeps, we were fighting open battles. It was awesome experience. And I'm not, um, if you know me in Lotro, if you've played with me in Lotro, you know that I'm not big on voice chat, in game voice chat. But when it comes to the, the Moors and the raids, because I've been in raids before and I, and I know, sort of picked up on what the raid leaders would say and, you know, um, how to delegate tasks, how to make use of the different classes in your groups, how to you know how to delegate that work and call out things that needs to be called out in terms of reses or where to go or where to stop or what keep we're digging next or you know try and predict where the creep rate is gonna move next. So all that just came out of nowhere and everybody was like, damn, uh, maybe you should do this more often, but I can't. you know it's it's just it's just impossible for me these days so and that was back on the Riddermark server too so a lot of those players that I played with they've gone different ways we've all gone our separate ways in terms of heading to the new servers Gladden, Brandywine, uh, what's the new one? Arkenstone and I ended up in Landreval so yeah those are great memories and I probably will never do that again so looking back at it now yeah, I was really proud of that what's your number six Vega? Creating a Bjorning on landing. Oh um, it's a good one. When the Bjornings were first introduced. I made one on Riddamark, but like I got it to like level 10 and then I decided to make one on Land Rovo with, well, it was with you and Arva and we, we had a plan where we were all gonna like specialize in a different tree. Oh yeah, like, that's I right. Think you were gonna be red, Arva was gonna be blue and I was gonna be yellow. And then you guys ditched me on like day two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, hang on, hang on. That, but, that, that's <laughs> not true. That's not true. I did not ditch her. I, I think <laughs> I I leveled it up secretly and I got to 105 first. <laughs> I got my Bjorning to 105 first because at the time I was actually writing about the Bjorning thing, but you know, uh, at the time 
because I was I was working. Come on, Mike, I was working, and <laughs> and there was a time difference, so it was almost impossible yeah. to yeah. try and you know <laughs> log in when you guys were on and try to move that. But yeah, I do remember us making that plan <laughs> to level up the earnings. Wow. But uh, no, but my earnings. It was so fun to like just have a tune on a server. I didn't have any friends besides well you, but you know you were all you know a different time zone. But like, I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any aunts. I didn't have any kinmates. It was just a fresh, fresh low trip. It was, it was just uh, really needed at the time. Yeah, I, I would second that. I, I started the Bjorning on Landroll as well. And at the time, um, I did that because I saw that as a good opportunity to check out Landroll because we knew that Redemark was closing down. So in a way, we were like, um, I was planning to transfer to Landy. So I had I, I thought wouldn't it be great if we just create new characters there and just you know check it out for ourselves so at least when we transfer we know what we're getting into. But I agree with Wig. I mean it was it was so weird, right? Not having all the thousands of gold and not having any crafters. And I was I was relying on freebies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was relying on freebies. Yeah, and it was like so fun just to like actually have to find groups that you know like if I wanted to do run something on Ridamark, all I had to do was like type in RAM and I would have had the same people who always responded and that's fine that's great I love those guys but it was so fun just to you know experience new people yeah I agree all right let's head on to number five we're halfway there folks uh, hope you're still with us so at my number five is uh, again this is a this is a follow-up to my number six my number five is hitting rank 11 and rank 12 in PvP and I know a lot of you guys play Lotro for Lotro and not really are not really into PvP or and stuff like that. Guess what? When I first started, I was just like you. You know, I I would totally would not have joined PvP if it wasn't for like the friends and the community I was in. And you know, rank eleven, which is the rank of commander, was um, when I first started. I was aware of these cool titles you would see end gamers walking around. You know, second marshal, Jenko, or you know, third marshal, Brian Adams, or you know, and then there's like a commander, uh, Baba, Jabba, whatever the guy's name was, and I was always um, asphyxiated on that commander title. I was like, oh wow, does that mean, you know, is that like the highest rank or whatever? Because you know, it's military esque. It was it sounded kind of cool to me, so. I always had it in the back of my mind that someday I'm gonna go and get that title and then um, you know things just happened the way it happened we PvP'd we did a lot of stuff and uh, yeah I got that title rank 11 and 12 and that whole period rank from rank 9 10 11 and 12 all happened between 2013 and 2015 and those were some of the best PvP years uh, for me on Lotro uh, I'm sure Wiga, you'd second that as well because that was the time that we were out there almost every freaking day. <laughs> and the the cool part is that whenever I hit a rank, or whenever Wiga or I hit a rank, we were never far behind each other. <laughs> we were like either a month away from each other or literally weeks away from each other because that's how we grouped up so much and we did so much of this PvP stuff that you know it was just literally days of hitting ranks between each other, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, really proud of that titles. Um, I guess I'm going to stop at rank 12, guys. Third Marshal is probably... <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure I can do it again because uh, I'm not sure what the current Morse landscape is. I don't know if, you know, if Landroll has the, uh, the density or the populated or, you know, if the Morse is actually populated. But yeah, we'll see. I'll never say never. So I don't know. I think we've just been going out there. What, are you closer to rank 13 yet? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Two hundred fifty thousand renown or something like that? I don't even know. I'm not even that close now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we're gonna park for now, and you know, unless there's some really cool addition to the moors, or if there's new rewards that Standing Stone Games. Uh, P.S. This is like a, a hint for you guys if you don't have any plans for PvP. Uh, start making some plans because I guarantee you a lot of people will be interested. Both of us here included. So that's my number five. What's your number five, Bigam? Uh, becoming a chicken. Oh gosh! I somehow I knew this was gonna make it on the list. I somehow knew this was gonna be. Uh, 
said, like the first farmers fair that you know I experienced was with my friend, and he was he was looking at the board vendors, and he saw the chicken mask, and he's like, oh, that's that's kind of creepy. <laughs> so naturally, I had to get it, and then I had to wear it, and then it was just I've been a chicken ever since. Like you, you met me, I was already a chicken. <laughs> True story, guys. I think on her guard, she's not. She's been wearing this chicken costume for years. Years. <laughs> she's not taking it off, and and. You know, at, at the first, I think the first year of running stuff with Wigga, I never asked a question like, why are you in this chicken outfit? Like, you know, in my head, I'm like, maybe she's a chicken lover in real life, or, you know, maybe she she has a pet chicken <laughs> or something like that, 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 that she's so attracted to this chicken outfit. But yeah, now now I do know. And, you know, when Hobnonigans came around, gosh, I don't know. I think That was amazing. <laughs> That's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I guess as much. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, I wonder if you ever take off that chicken costume though. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. It'll be with me <laughs> till Lojo is over. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, number four. My number four is um, starting a Lotro blog and you know getting to meet the community outside of the game. Um, a lot of you may not know this actually that. I used to blog about Lotro. In fact, that blog is still live. I'm not sure how many of you stumbled upon it, but it was called the Malaysian Lotro Gamer uh, a couple of years ago, and then I changed it to Level Up Halfle, and now it's back to Malaysian Lotro Gamer again. And you know, I had no reason to start a blog until I stumbled across uh, what what are they called? Casual Stroll to Mordor. These were uh, American Golden Star, who are. Uh, husband and wife and they created this podcast a weekly podcast you know just talking about Lotro talking about the game giving the players news and you know, updates and highlighting the community like you know who they're uh, which events are gonna go on you know which kin is having a cool event stuff like that and I thought wow that's really cool I did not know that you know uh, these things existed I mean at the time I mean Lotro is my first MMO if I started off with WoW I'll, I would probably have known this stuff, right? Because wow, in the community and stuff like that. So, yeah, that they introduced me to a whole bunch of blogs, and it was just really cool to see people writing about their experiences in game, you know, writing short stories, writing guides, and stuff like that. And my background, uh, in terms of what I do in real life or what I studied, is around communications and writing. So I thought, now yeah, let's start a blog too, you know, see how far that goes. And yeah, that was a really fun experience for me just blogging about Lotro and making guides and you know it was kind of weird at first because I thought nobody reads these things you know and then it's one day I get in game and it's like hey you're the Malaysian Lotro gamer and I'm like shit <laughs> you read the blog <laughs> I had so many grammatical mistakes and you know it's just it's just me putting my thoughts into a blog and and the fact that people start reading it and they were interested in hearing what my thoughts are about, about the game or stuff like that it was it was really cool for me and I, I suppose it was it was a large factor about me venturing outside of blogging in terms of doing, you know, moving on to videos and now moving on to YouTube stuff like that. So, yeah, really grateful for uh, the community, people like CSDM, Casual Show to Motor, people like Lotro Reporter, you know, for uh, showing me that, you know, these platforms do exist. And if you want to take your, uh, you know, your enthusiasm or your uh, love for Lotro outside of the game, you can do so. So that's that's exactly what I did. And I'm happy that I did it too. I'm never gonna blog again, but that, that that blog is still up. If anybody wants to go back and read my old stuff, which is cringe, a lot of it's cringy. <laughs> I don't care. It's up. You know, I'm not gonna change it. Righto, what's your number four, Riga? Um, jumping off the prow of Ministerius. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I've mentioned my friend over and over again. Like, one of the things we did a lot was stand in Southbury and play music, and his two favorite songs to play were Prince Ali from Aladdin and uh, Dust in the Wind. And one day he told me, he's like, we're gonna we're gonna stand on the prow of Minas Tirith, we're gonna play these songs, and then we're just gonna use the dragon emote on each other and jump off, and we're gonna Denethor. <laughs> but he stopped, he stopped playing before they introduced Minas Tirith, and he, I haven't seen him since. So soon as like they introduced ministeria like first thing i did i got lost getting up to it there but you know <laughs> i went up there i played those two songs and i didn't have anyone to use the dragon animal on me but you know whatever and i just jumped off and that was that was 
pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds epic. And you know what? You should have recorded that and you know, emailed it to him. It's like, I, <laughs> I did it. I'm waiting for you to come and do it. <laughs> wow. That's something I've not done. Just jump off. I mean, I'm not. I'm not one to. There's a date for it. Oh, there is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I see you. You're just making me kill myself now. Now I gotta go do it. <laughs> and you know, Loach, I love that Loach does these things. Like, remember um, when you fell down the well in Moria for the first time? Oh yeah. I was like. Well traveled. <laughs> yeah, well traveled. I'm like, holy crap! That's that's kind of funny. Like, I wonder where else could we jump off and get cool deeds? But yeah, I should totally go and do that now. Okay, moving on to number three, and I mentioned earlier in the list that, you know, there's probably going to be some crossover between Wigga's list and my list, and number three is exactly that. My number three is entering and completing Moria for the first time, and Moria to me, because um, I grew up watching the movies, and then I went and read the books, so, you know, unlike a lot of Lotro peeps, uh, or a lot of Lord of the Rings fans, my introduction to the world of Tolkien was reversed so I got into it with the movies first and Moria in the movies was what really stuck to me when I think about the Fellowship of the Ring because wow we were introduced to the, you know to the Dwarven Kingdom and we get to see it and I just love the architecture um, I just love that atmosphere that the movie captured you know it's dark it's desolate it's sort of creepy but at the same time there's all this rich you know lore and history uh, of dwarven royalty and of you know a race of people that were so glorious in their heyday and now they're just left with this empty cavern you know and when Moria launched and getting to go inside the mines of Moria for the first time. I'm like, holy shit. And to the devs who, who you know, designed Moria and created Moria, and those were a turbine. I'm not sure how many of the, that, you know, team of devs are left in, in Standing Stone games, but I tip my hat off to you because it is my favorite expansion in Lotro. And I say that uh, wholeheartedly. I absolutely love Moria. And my first tune, my champion, my first tune that I took through there, I spent at least two months. I spent two months in Moria, just soaking it all in, exploring, doing all the deeds, uh, you know, doing all the quests. And you got to remember that back then in 2011, Moria hadn't gone through the revamped, uh, revamped version yet. So there wasn't a lot of stable masters around. Um, the quests were not as streamlined as it is today. So there's a lot of exploration that you had to do. And a lot of it on foot too, because I did not have a goat at the time. That was my first main character. I did not uh, do enough of Thorin's gate stuff to actually have a goat. So a lot of the time I was running around Moria on foot, which, which is why I, I took two months. And wow, it, it just blew my mind. And the best thing about Moria for me that I still hold dearly today are the instance clusters. Man, those were some of my favorite instances in low show period. Like I, I can do Grand Stairs in my sleep the same way a lot of us can do the great barrows uh sandbrog maybe but yeah grand stairs so uh, what's the other one gosh there were so many cool instances in lotro the raids too it was just a fantastic moment and i'm not sure if they, if they scale they don't scale do they no. Says, no i really wish they did because i would totally go back and do them for nostalgia's sake great and you know because two months in that dark cavern when when you when you exit moria and you look at lothlorien for the first time you're like oh my god you know it just it the thing about moria is it's designed in a way that once you exit you exit straight into lothlorien and the contrast is so epic that you actually feel like the fellowship did like crap you know we're out of this mess we're out of this doomy place and we're into the light which i thought they did brilliantly and you know later on 2013 2014 when i get new kidneys in my kin at the time i tell them you know you haven't experienced lotro if you've not gone and done moria because a lot of people i know a lot of people hate it because of reasons i i just exclaimed um explained but I'm going to say this again, if you have not experienced Moria, then you have not experienced Lotro, because that is a must. That's a must play if you have not played it. Righto, what's your number three? You already mentioned this, but... <laughs> um, Hobnotigans. Oh, oh, there we go, okay. 
because <laughs> it was it was during that like that two month period where we were on like constantly in the moors mm -hmm. and I was trying to get raked in before you but you got it like half an hour before I did <laughs> half an hour you're complaining about half an hour at least we got it on the same day at least we got it on the same day <laughs> yeah it was just a uh, it was it was a pretty it was a crazy night like I remember it I remember I got it it was near um, elf camp yeah mm -hmm. yeah yep. it was just crazy I don't remember who I killed I didn't even see it it was just I like so who told me it was either you or pathogen I can't remember you guys were like oh you got rank congratulations I was like no <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens a lot a lot of times when we rank we don't exactly you know see who it is or what but uh in your case we got i actually have a video of that i do i have a video up it's on youtube on my old channel and i'll probably play that clip uh in the background when i put this video together so you'll get to see that <coughs> yeah that that was some awesome moments i mean it's not just that you know it's not just us ranking in the moors that what makes it memorable it's the people that we were with too at the time you know we've got all yeah. our friends in in the group and we're all doing this together and what we were doing in pve raids you know we're fighting yeah there's there's huge things at stake you want to beat the boss you know and you want to get the loot but when it comes to bringing that same group of people to pvp the whole ball game's changed you know we were fighting for survival we we're fighting against real players and you know it just made the more is more epic when you're playing with your raid alliance mates you know because it's it just yeah that was i feel like that was like one of the best combinations like of having the same the same group people you raid with and people you pvp with being the same people it was great yeah yeah this is making me this is pulling all the nostalgia strings right now <laughs> <laughs> wow okay let's move on to number two Man, talking about nostalgia, I'm not helping myself at all with this uh, entries in the list. My number two is getting all my real-life close friends to play Lotro. And <laughs> the context here is when I started playing Lotro, I, I joined this by myself. Um, I, I have a close bunch of friends that uh, I grew up together in high school and you know we, we would do everything everything together we would you know we were go camping we play music together we're all in a band and you know we just couldn't be separated for whatever reason so one day I became non-social to them and they were wondering where did where did Halfle go I mean where, where, where did Adrian go where, where the hell did he go and they found that I was you know spending all my time on Lotro so they're like what is this game and I just told them look I'm playing this you know MMO uh, it's called Lord of the Rings Online. It's completely free to play now, and you know why don't all of you guys come and join me? Because I haven't seen too many Malaysian players around, and why, let's just start a Malaysian kin on uh, Rittermark server, and you know let's try and grow it. And within a week of convincing them to just you know try to go through the tutorial and go through Arch, Archit and you know Comb and Bree, um, all of them became regular players for at least two years and. I just, I miss that so much because it was, you know, playing Lotro with your real life close friends and there's a, something that you can't replicate there because, um, you know, you could be yourself, you could totally be yourself and they'll be happy with it. And there were so many moments when everybody got up to uh, Morio, we were doing, my favorite memory of this was um, we were out for dinner uh, and, you know, we had too much to drink. And when we came back, on the way back, I was telling them, let's all hop on Lotro, let's do the Grand Stairs, because we were drunk. And, you know, I got home, I poured myself a glass of wine, <laughs> and we started doing we started doing Grand Stairs. And in the midway of the last boss, I, I poured wine all over my mouse and keyboard, and we were still playing it, and we got it done, and all of us were pissed drunk. And, you know, that's that's my fondest memory of playing, you know, with, with my group of friends. And... All of them are gone from Lotro now. Some didn't even <laughs> log in to transfer the characters over to Landroll when the world's closed. So yeah, I'm gonna miss them really. Ah, life and growing up. What's your number two, Abiga? Um, becoming successor to PKOD. <laughs> my uh, kin started with it was my mom and someone she'd met in game. 
uh, this champ, they started the kin together. It was, it was those two, me, and then the champ's brother. And, um, like, those two, the champ and his brother, they stopped playing. And, like, somewhere around Rise of Isengard, um, the champ logged in. He's like, guys, I just don't have enough time to play anymore. I'm going to pass the leadership to Menth, who's my mom. And then uh, we're like, well, you can be a successor. It doesn't matter. You can just, you know, still be in the kin. But he was like, no, nah, I just want to be an officer. You know, why don't you give successor to Wiga? And I was like, oh, what? Because <laughs> my kin was so much bigger back then. I think we had at least 12 active people every day. And right now we only have like four. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I became successor and I like wore the title and everything. And like everyone in my uh, raid alliance was like, wait, you just became successor? Isn't your mom like the leader? <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, no, technically she was successor, but now I'm successor. So it was just, you know, cool. Nice. And for those of you wondering, uh, DKOD is called Dragon Knights of the Dunedain. They are a kinship on the Landrill server that Wiga is now the successor of. If anyone's <laughs> interested in joining that kin, you know what to do. Send Wiga a tail, send Wiga a mail, and she will probably hook you up with a spot in her kinship. I have, well, I'm a successor still. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I have full power, full control, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Okay, so now we're coming to the end of the list. I am down, we are both down to our number one uh, of our greatest moments on Lotro. And my number one is uh, meeting the Fellowship in Rivendell for the first time on my main that to me seeing that or playing the epic story that led up to that point where you know the first one was there was this valley that you go through in the high moors that when you hit it and you get to see you have a you have a view of rivendell from from the cliff and i was like holy cow this that was a goosebump moment because a lot of people in the kin that I was in the time was like, oh, you can only go to Rivendell at this level. Oh, you can only go to Rivendell, you know, when you've done Spartan Epics. I it just ignored all of them and I just, you know, got on my horse and I just rode all the way and saw Rivendell there. And then when I came back following the epic story and to see that you are, in fact, playing a part of the Fellowship of the Ring and their journey to destroy that one ring and to be able to watch that you know, in a, a solo instance, or yeah, it was a solo instance, I think. And to see them depart, to see all these characters that you know from the books and the movies just there in game, they're right there. It was such a great moment for me because that's why I started playing Lotro. You know, I just wanted to to immerse myself in this the story that Tolkien's that Tolkien has told, and just being there in their presence was like, wow. And you know, ever since we've been with the fellowship wherever they go and right now we're on doorstep of Mordor and you know we just saw the confrontation between you know host of the west and the mouth of Sauron and yeah I will continue to watch you know what happens um, in in the story and how you know devs are gonna bring that to life there's still one big part of that epic story left um, to see before the ring gets destroyed and I, I wonder if that's going to be in this expansion. It probably will. And then what's exciting is what's going to come after that. But yeah, my number one is a great throwback to the moment you realize you are a part of this, uh, you know, this Middle Earth. And as a free people of Middle Earth, you're doing your part to help the Fellowship along. I thought that was a really cool uh, nod to the IP. All right, Vega, what's your number one? Oh, this is the cheesiest one. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember uh, I was in a raid and we were short the captain and we had to go to Glyph and I was like guys we cannot get competent captain from Glyph that's impossible you might get a good DPS from Glyph you might get a good healer from Glyph there's no way you can get a good captain from Glyph that's global looking for fellowship they, it's not world chat uh, it was before world chat and uh, so everyone was like yeah I know we got the, we need a captain what can we do and so we got this captain. I was like, oh, look at him. I don't even know if he knows what to do. So like everyone inspected him. And I was like, oh, well, I guess. I don't know. 
and turns out it's one of the best captains I've ever played with. <laughs> and that was uh, it was you, by the way. <laughs> I kind of figured that out. <laughs> So then, uh, we've been friends ever since. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a it's a <laughs> real. Yeah, it's it's. See, I'm lost for words now. Um, <laughs> such a great moment, really, because I, as I said, you know, my number ten is essentially what your number one is, and and you know, it's cheesy because I never, I did not expect you know to find people that were. Uh, you know, people that I could gel with on an online game that were thousands of miles away on different continents, and and here we are, you know, talking about Lotro as friends, and and I, it's just the coolest thing ever, and yeah, I I, I feel the same way. I think it, one of the greatest moments uh, out of this ten that Lotro has given us over ten years was actually bringing people together, you know, and and that that's really really cool. And the fact that the fact that you brought that up kind of spoiled <laughs> kind kind of spoiled my bonus section. <laughs> I had a bonus <laughs> section after the number one, so I guess I'll just go into it. Um, the bonus section was it was a question that we're gonna direct at each other, and here's the fun part. You know, the bonus question is what have we learned about each other's classes? And here's the catch: I play a captain. The only class that Wiga doesn't have at level cap, she <laughs> she mains, um, and I know she's got multiple choices here. But over the guard or the lore master, I've played with Wiga's lore master the most, and I've seen her do things I never imagined a lore master could do, and that's one of the classes I don't have at cap. So we we're gonna have to talk about each other's classes. What have we learned <laughs> about each other's classes? So. I'm gonna go first. So, the lore master, as played by Wiga. See, when, you know, at the start of the game, I avoided the lore master class because, you know, I didn't want to play a Gandalf type class. It just didn't appeal to me. Magic users and, you know, all this lore, like, you know, elemental stuff. Just, I'm more of a melee type player. So, when I first got introduced to uh, Wiga and her lore master uh, in the Ram Alliance raiding days, it just blew my mind uh, how important um, you know these two people were and Wiga there was another person that Wiga played with who also had a lore master uh, her name was Cal short for Kalenian so both Wiga and Cal both of them played lore masters and they were doing things in the raids that makes everybody's jobs so much easier back before the class trait trees you need power here have some power you need, you know, red, uh, stuns and CCs. Here, have some CCs. And I thought, wow. So that's what lore masters do at Endgame. I've never seen people do it in a very systematic way um, that required, you know, a lot of micromanaging and at the same time contributing to the overall DPS of, you know, that particular raid or that particular boss. And I was just there looking at that thinking, wow, I don't think I could ever do that. You know, because the fact that it is a light armored class, so it's going to be squishy as hell. And the fact that, um, you know, a lot of your gear is going to be dependent on, you know, will and stuff like that. And I was never into that part of gearing my class. So I just thought I could never do that. And it's one of those barriers that until today still exists. You know, I don't have a lore master above level 50 in the game. Um, but there are many times when I look back at, you know, Wiga and what she could do, I thought maybe it's time to level one. And that's just PvE. When we got to PvP, it, it just blew my mind. It's like people were scared of Wiga and a lore master. And because the the things that she could do to creeps or the things that the class could do to creeps, you know. Um, I remember this one this favorite moment of mine was we we had this black arrow. I can't remember this person's name, but they were shooting us from afar and if we could just use a spell or something on it that just completely ruined a kill for that that creep class I don't know what that skill is I can't remember <laughs> but I was like wow creeps fear a lore masters you know that's that's kind of cool so what I've ultimately learned about the lore masters is 
um, at Endgame especially, you know, they they have a lot to offer the group. And, you know, if played by someone who knows the ins and out of the class, um, they're really, really a powerful class. And one I regret not leveling, maybe I'll get to it someday. But, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the Lore Master after seeing Wega play it. <laughs> It was Nuller, I remember that, because Nuller was like my rival in the wars. Uh, I kind of missed playing against her. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, so you remember that? You remember that moment? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because you were like, you were like, you are like, oh my god, we, uh, we just made this black guy come up and try to melee you. Cause <laughs> yeah. I was using a uh, Windlor, which at the time was like a minus 50% range debuff. So like Nuller, I guess she just got tired of me just you know, <laughs> windlowing her, and she just came up trying yeah. to melee. That was awesome. That was cool. I mean, there's only one class that can make you know BA seem so relevant. Like, ah, damn it, I'm just gonna go up and try and smack him. And because I was with Wiga and I was a captain, so besides shouting at you know this person from range, I pretty I can't do crap. So you know, having a lore master, you know, cast water lore and bring people nearer, that was really handy. Which is why the captain lore master combo worked brilliantly, in my opinion. So yeah, what have you learned about the captain class? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure there's this quote in your bio, was like that pretty much sums up what I think of captains because of you. Um, captains are like a jack of all trades kind of uh, class and so when i group with the captain i feel invincible no matter what class i'm on my hunter my lore master my guard anything like i feel like oh i'm never gonna die because i got this captain here <laughs> and i like if i'm not on like my guard then i'm like well i'm never gonna die and i have a tank because the captain's here or you know or in like you boost the dps of like every everybody around you and so um whenever i come across a captain who is who can't do all of that at the same time i know like well now with the trait trees it's a lot more difficult but like still i have this expectation of captains to just like do everything <laughs> and when i find a captain who can't i'm like oh i miss half of so much <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh I think we've, we've been spoiled by playing with each other for so long that, you know, you just expect yeah. uh, other people to do these things. Yeah, like, I'm like, well, why didn't you just, just Kappa would have taken care of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, to, to the outside world, to everyone watching, it seems like we paid each other gold to talk about each other. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the case. It's 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 a it's the feelings mutual, you know, because we've known each other for so long, and only now we're able to celebrate it because you know Lotro has been around for ten years, and it's great that we get to talk about all these things. So, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up pretty much our uh, both of our ten you know greatest moments on Lotro, and you know I also want to hear about your greatest moments on Lotro. So. I want you to start thinking about some of the best moments, the best times, what's your best achievement, your greatest milestone, your favorite moments, most memorable moments. Think of that and let me know in the comments section below. I want to hear all about it, so start typing away, folks. And again, as a reminder, the Anniversary Festival is now live. The episodic quests are now live too. Am I right, Miguel? Is it live? Yeah. Right, so you can log in and start doing that. There's a whole bunch of... Uh, you know, rewards to earn and stuff like that on top of the usual stuff at the party tree too in the Shire so go on and check that out. So with that I guess we will end this Lotro discussion our 10 greatest moments, favorite moments, most memorable moments in Lotro. I want to thank you guys for uh, sitting down and watching this in full and again I want to hear what yours are in the comments section below. So I would like to say a big thank you to my special guest my good friend Wega. Thanks for being on. Thank you. And I will now release you to complete your anniversary <laughs> quests. <laughs> and as for me, I will be live streaming uh, the anniversary episodic quests uh, in about a few hours' time, depending on how soon I can edit, render, and publish this video. But yeah, I'll be hopping in and checking out all the new stuff. And as I said at the start of the video, that's not all that's coming out. I've got a whole bunch of Lotro content to celebrate 10 years of Lotro as well. I'll be talking about my favorite regions, you know, 
maybe classes too that would be interesting and maybe favorite instances that'll be interesting and maybe i'll bring wig on for some of that so until then i want to thank you guys for watching uh hit the like button if you enjoyed this lotro discussion and do subscribe to the channel for more on lotro and other mmos once again my name is jerem adrian and i thank you for watching Greetings programs, you have reached the end screen of the video. If you want to subscribe to this channel, click the button in the middle. If you want to watch more videos, click the cards to the left or to the right. Shutting down now.